Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Loan Officer Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Dio, what's poppin'? Hey, back from vacay? Oh, yeah. Spent a little time up in the city of brotherly love? Uh, Ohio? Uh, negative Ghost Rider. Ohio isn't even considered a state these days. Really? So, city of brotherly love would be Philadelphia. The hell is in Philadelphia? Cheesesteaks. Besides rabid fans. Rabid fans, cheesesteaks, and a lot of history. A so lot, a lot, I, a please lot, don't lot start of history. With this shit. I do oh, not, we're going to start on history all day, care. every day. Please. All day, every day. I got back in time to make it down to Tampa, Florida. Shout out, Tampa. Shout out to the Tampa crew. Mm-hmm. The Mortgage Bankers Association of Tampa had their annual installation banquet, right? So this is basically a changing of the guard where the new president of the organization is sworn in as well as the new vice president and treasurer and the board, et cetera, et cetera. And I was very fortunate that yours truly was invited to come down. And not only was I the master of ceremonies, meaning I was the one that basically said, do you? Yes. Do you? Yes. Repeat after me. For real? I got to do that. Did you get to knight them, put the sword on the shoulder or some shit? Truth be told, we did that at the very end. Are you serious? Hold on. We did not knight anybody. Okay, okay. (laughs) That would be badass though, wouldn't it? No, for next year. No, truth be told, we did the um, the pledging in of the new board at the end. Mm-hmm. And by that time, the crowd was getting rowdy and rambunctious. They started the event at 430 with two drink tickets, but a, bar, a cash bar yeah, afterwards. I love them drink tickets. Two drink tickets. That's, that's for liability purposes. Look, if you want to sit there and get loaded, <laughs> have fun. Knock yourself out. But you're only going to have two drinks on the NBA uh, yeah, of right, Tampa, right? right. And then um, they had a guest speaker. And that dude knocked it out of the park. Yeah, he crushed heard, do you it. know him? Yeah, know him really well. Who? I've known him for 44 years. Literally, I wake up with the dude every day. Your wife? Every who? day. Who? No, the dude. Oh. Yeah, my wife's not a dude. I know. Who? Who? Yeah. That? Yours truly, homie. Oh, Come on shit, now. You, you were had there? It, you I had teed it up you on, up. You had it up on tloponline.com. I teed you up. If you ever want to know where we're speaking next or what's going on in our world, Peep the website. literally go to the website. It's right on the Guys, homepage. girls, mortgage professionals, currently this website is mortgage branch manager in a box and it gets better by the week by the month by the quarter if you fast forward a year from now Mm. it's not only going to be mortgage branch manager in a box it's going to be a badass resource for real estate investors as well as a phenomenal resource for the consumer right people looking for advice on purchasing homes and and selling homes and budgeting and and personal finance but right now if you are a mortgage professional and you have not been over to TLOP online.com, T L O P mm-hmm. online.com. It's essentially a branch manager in a box, offer a myriad of services and tools and links and resources and training videos. And that's also where you can see where we're going to be speaking next. Yeah. And Tampa's been up there. So we actually have people travel in. They're not, even, they're not even NBA people, some of these. Shout people. out to those people that aren't NBA people that came down. Well, for how about event. shout out to Brian from Ocala? Oh, shit. You got names? Literally, shout out to Brian from Ocala. Yeah. Um, Joined the mortgage business just recently. T-Lop fan. Drove his happy butt the 90 minutes to get down there. Right? Shout out to Candy. 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 She has never been to an NBA function, but she's a T-Lopper, so she showed up. And then you had some other people that that showed up. They're both. They're NBA uh, advocates Mm -hmm. and members. And they are also T-Loppers. T-Loppers. Yeah. Kristen. Russ. Shout out Russ. Yeah, shout out Russ. Yeah, Russ loves us. And we love Russ. <laughs> yeah. We literally love Russ. And Russ's been in the business for gosh, 15, 20 years. Look at you loves spreading the good word. Love. Yeah. So it was um it was uh, it was pretty awesome. It was a cool event. And uh it's I taught my course or my class about a one hour presentation, basically the six sales strategies for expanding your network. Mm. Right? Because he or she with the most friends wins. The more people you know, the more leads you can generate, the more leads you can generate. Then the more transactions you can close, the more transactions you close, the more money you make, the more money you make, the more money you save. The more money you make, the more money you can spend on stuff you don't need. As well as more money you can give back to the less fortunate. That's where I was going to say that. Yeah. So anyhow, um, shout out to all those people. Also, one more shout out. We did an episode a few back Mm -hmm. where it's like tools every mortgage loan originator needs. Somehow, and I use this product. Like I got an alert today. 
and it reminded me to go back and, and rewatch on YouTube mm -hmm. that episode. Uh -huh. I don't know how I missed out Monitor Base. Shout out Monitor Base. Dude, Monitor Base for those mortgage professionals out there, I use their service because it helps me track every time a past client of mine has their credit pulled for a new mortgage, I get a, a ding. Uh -oh. I get a ping. It also sends out a uh, some marketing collateral that tells them, hey, by the way, you know Dustin Owen's still in the mortgage industry. You know you should call him for your next mortgage. But I can pick up the phone. They provide me scripts to use to let people know, hey, look, this is a pretty cool kind of creepy service I, I, I provide to clients mm -hmm. like you to remind you that you know, I'm still here to service all of your real estate finance needs. They can do the same thing for my prospects. Like they do a lot of things, but Monitor Base is a tool that I personally use. And I think it's a tool that uh, a lot of other top producers use. And for whatever reason, they were left out of that episode and just wasn't fair. Well, now it's fair because they got the spotlight all to themselves. So yeah. Do you, know what, do you know what today is? And don't tell me Wednesday. It is Wednesday, by the way. We are recording this on Wednesday. It'll drop on Friday. What's today? When today is hot outside. That's what today Jesus is. Jesus is hot. Dude, I got up at 4.45 this morning, let my Sean, dog out, and I choked on the humidity. It's hot. Yeah, I did not have that in Philadelphia. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to give you a, a hint. Okay. Philadelphia, right? Philadelphia, I saw Betsy Ross's house. Do you don't, remember who Betsy Ross is? I don't even know who that is. I'm going to say I don't know most of what you're about to tell me right now. Okay. Well, today's flag day. Today is flag day. I would not have guessed that one. Yeah, crazy story that today is flag day because I learned a little bit about flag day when I was up in Philadelphia. So Betsy Ross is the lady who has been given credit throughout history, or at least since like, For like the mid 1800s. Stitching the flag. She supposedly was the upholstery maker who also was a flag maker who supposedly. Allegedly. It, allegedly. In the history books, it's, it's written that she made the first American flag, the stars and bars the way that we know it. Okay. It's a whole lot debated now because it wasn't really known to the world that it was Betsy Ross until like decades after her death and her grandson was going around town saying, hey, by the way, my, my grandmother. Oh, wow. And it's like, well, but if you go back to your childhood history book, it was Betsy Ross. So yeah, Betsy Ross, Philadelphia. I saw the Betsy Ross house. And today is flag day that we're recording this. I'm like, oh, how cool is that? The universe. Uh, Betsy Ross is given credit for this. The five star, the five point star, five point star. Mm -hmm. That's the only star we know has five points. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, they used the six point star because that's just essentially two triangles meshed together. Mm. Right. I think of a six point star as the star of David. Mm -hmm. But Betsy Ross, as a great upholsterer, mm -hmm. And flag maker actually realized that she could more easily using less fabric and quicker if she folded and cut the fabric the right way could make a five point star. Look at that business. So aptitude. the American flag is the first known use of five point stars and today's flag day. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But what I really want to get into, John, oh gosh, the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia which I believe is Greek. I don't think you can say bad Greek, things about Philly fans. Phila and Delphia, it's like brother and love, okay? Okay. Um, the and, Windy City. Yep, Pennsylvania, right, because it was oh. founded by William Penn. Penn and Teller? No, not Penn and Teller and not the Penn tennis ball, but William Penn. Okay. William Penn's father knew people. That's how life works. Life works based on known people and being owed favors. Okay. If you know enough people and, you, uh, and you're and you owed enough favors, you're going to get, get, get along far in life. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Penn's dad was friends with the King of England. Okay. King of England needed some money. Mr. Penn's dad, called him Grandpa Penn, Word. he lent the king a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. That king used that money to fund a war. The war must have turned out well, but not well enough because the king never repaid Mr. Penn. Uh-oh. Mr. Penn's son was done being an Anglican. That's William Penn. He's all done. He's like, oh, I'm not doing this Anglican religion, right? Mm. He wants to be a Quaker. Okay. Oh, that's a big issue. In the 1600s, living in England, wouldn't be a Quaker. So Grandpa Penn dies. King goes to William Penn, says, hey, Willie, I need you out of here, bro. Like, you can't be a Quaker. I can't be locking you up because he had been arrested before for his practicing his religion. How about this? How would I give you 40 million square miles of land over across the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. And you can go over there. Don't mind the natives who are already on the land. It's now yours and you can name it. Okay. So he named it Pennsylvania. Is this going somewhere? 
Oh, that was a story. That's just some history I oh, learned, John. Oh, yeah. I'm not a history buff, Dustin. At all? No. I oh, terrible. you don't get excited about it? No. Like, ancient, like, alien history. Okay, you're going to hate today's episode. Point blank. Please play along. Please play your role. You are the talent of the show. We all know it, John. I know, but what so is this? You, I actually I don't. Love I, how you I, said that. I know. I, I don't know what today's episode it is. We didn't discuss it, and I preface today's it by episode telling. is. Oh, you sorry. You no, 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 no. Tell, no. tell the audience. I know. I don't know. Me. No, I, I don't know what it is. I'm going in blind. So I'm. This is the first time I'm hearing. It. It's going to be the first time y'all are hearing it too. So yep. Please do tell. Me. I asked John. I said, John, what are we talking about today? He's like, I don't have anything. Do you have something? So I got something. He goes, Great. Don't tell me. Yeah. He goes, I want to be as shocked as the audience. That's right that new strong weed that you said and now i'm ready to listen and absorb the knowledge okay yeah you must have bought a new strand huh shout out cookies down the street oh you went you stopped going to true leave yeah tr from the stock to the quality in the gutter okay yeah well yeah now we can smell you <laughs> so you're gonna have to do something about that <laughs> no, that's just you, cool. you may need to use a pen during the day and keep your no, flower for at flower, night flower 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 but yeah come on let's okay. talk about it so um I, I hope that today's episode goes so well that I'm going to end up writing a presentation okay. that I can give at events like Earn, Learn, and Grow, a sales symposium for mortgage sales professionals. I heard of that one. Uh, and I hope it's also maybe my next article for Housing Wire. Maybe I can get it out for right around July 4th. Because here we are mid-June. Look at If you. I can get it written and I can get it over to Housing Wire, they can edit it and then get it posted. Maybe it'd be like a July 4th special edition. You know, I did get a notice today from Forbes. I think my first official Forbes article is going to be published in the next couple of weeks. Can you say that again just for the people who weren't paying attention? I think my first official mm -hmm. Forbes article, like I wrote an article a few weeks back. I sent it off to the editors. The editors had some revisions. We discussed them. I made those revisions. I sent it back. And today, right before we hit record, I received an email notification from Forbes. and like, hey. Please approve your article so we can publish it. You better add that shit to your, what do you call it? Hype? What do you put up? The signature in your email? I hope so. I need someone to help me figure it out. As seen on. As seen on. Housing Wire. Forbes. As Forbes. Yep. Wall Street Journal. Not yet, but hey, thanks for the Once challenge. Once you got the Forbes and the Housing Wire, no one's going to fact check you if you're on Wall Street. Yeah, so no, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I need to get another article written for Housing Wire, and I think it's going to be based on today's episode. Let's go. If it goes well. Now, if it drops, if it bombs, then... It was still yeah, like you and I did an episode that I loved, yeah. which is us telling our story about what we've learned from podcasting, but mm -hmm. also in a manner where people interested in podcasting mm -hmm. in their local markets mm -hmm. to use it to grow their brand awareness and yeah. maybe generate more leads hasn't gotten the love that I thought it would, it has but it's a okay. Long, it has a long tail. Okay, it has a long tail. I want to talk about everything we as business professionals can learn from our forefathers. Oh, shit. Let me tune it out now, but go ahead. No, think about this. Like, like I'm going to start with, with, with what are now my three favorite words in the U.S. Constitution. Get out. Do you even know the first three words? Of the in US the beginning. Hold on. That's a, on, 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 um, uh, four score and seven years ago. No, nope, that's a Gettysburg address. Yeah, All that, right, what's the, that, what, that happened about 90 years ago. All right. What are you course. asking me? What are you asking? The Constitution. We, we, the people, we, the people. Yes. Oh. Okay. Those are not my three favorite words. Okay. P more perfect union. Oh, in order to form a more perfect union. Oh, okay. Okay. So our forefathers were discussing their new country and they are acknowledging that it wasn't perfect, but it was damn near close. So they wanted to make this document so that they could form a more perfect union. In business, like in life, it is a journey. These are things that we can learn, not necessarily how to create a country and a government, right, in three branches and mm -hmm. balance of power. No, 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 just in general, what were they saying in order to create a more perfect union? Better yet, here's something that's really cool to think about. The Constitution was written in 1787. It wasn't even ratified to the next year, 1788, and it didn't go into law until 1789. Now, to you and many people listening, like, okay, that's a long time ago, right? 250 years ago or whatever the math is. But let me just roll back. The Declaration of Independence, which we're getting ready to celebrate next month, right? That happened in 1776. 1776 is when we claim our country's birth. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Our Constitution was written 11 years after we declared independence. Mm -hmm. It wasn't ratified, meaning it wasn't approved, until 88, and it didn't go into law for 89. What that tells me is nothing great happens overnight. In life and in business, young mortgage professionals tuning in, young entrepreneurs, young business owners, if you're three years in, five years in, seven years in, and you're scratching your head, our forefathers, they too were scratching their head. They too were just getting started. When you start putting all these dates in, in line and in, in, in a chronological order, I'm like, damn, there's something to be learned about that. So then I want to dig a little bit deeper. I'm like, all right, even if you're not a history buff, John, and you're from Massachusetts, mm -hmm. one of the original 13 colonies. Yeah. That, that. Have, have, you, have you heard of this thing called the Boston Tea Party? Yeah, that's when they dumped the shit in the river yep they dumped tea yeah in the bay yeah i remember and that. do you know what the colonists were like why they do that were they just a bunch of thugs no i think it was like prohibition for tea or something yeah they were actually uh pushing back against the king of england who wanted to tax their tea yeah that's what i meant to say yeah it, it's the whole no taxation without representation oh okay yeah they didn't mind that they were being taxed. They were being mi they minded that they were being taxed, but didn't have a seat in Parliament. Mm -hmm. They didn't have anyone representing the colonies over in England in Parliament. So they didn't have a say. So they didn't have a say. Yeah, they didn't have a representation. But that happened in 1773. Okay. Declaration of Independence wasn't until 1776. That was after. Okay, I'm following you. Okay, so for for three years, people were unhappy. For three years, they were trying to figure out what to do. They didn't have the answer right away, right? They didn't have, they didn't know what to do, but they were gonna try. They weren't gonna sit back idly. So my question to, to sales professionals and business owners and people in life, what's going on right now that's your Boston Tea Party? What's, what's your first opportunity to take a stand against something you believe in or fight for something you want really bad? And then more importantly, are you willing to go three years before you find clarity in some direction? Because that's what our forefathers had to do. It started in Massachusetts. Now, when it started in Massachusetts, do you think the people in Georgia gave two, two shits? Oh, no. No. They didn't know anyone in Massachusetts. What the hell is tea? What the hell is tea? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they're chewing, chewing tobacco and picking cotton. Um, but by 1774... We had the first Continental Convention. By the way, all of this transpires, except for the Boston Tea Party that happened in Boston. The first Continental Convention, the second Continental Convention, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitutional Convention, and the Constitution. What? They all happened in Philadelphia. Why? They all happened in Philadelphia. I'll answer that question for you. And... Philadelphia was the first official real capital of the United States of America. Then why ain't the capital now? It started in New York. It quickly went to Philly before it became D.C. They need to put it in Ocala. What? Can you put it in Ocala? <clears throat> Have not? you been to Ocala? Never in my life. I mean, if you love horses as much as I do, you <clears throat> want to go to Ocala. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but other than horses, I mean, and and a, a, a cheaper, a, a cheaper and slower, a, a cheaper cost of living and a slower way of living. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Ocala. But Ocala, Florida, by the way, for those that that are tuning in from all over the country, uh, for us in like Orlando or Jacksonville or Tampa, like we still view Ocala as what some people would say, like farm town, cow town. Oh, okay. Uh, now yeah, you're educating but it's, me. It's phenomenal for horse breeding. There you yep. go. But anyhow. Um, no, so it was Philadelphia. You asked, you asked me the yeah. question, why right. Philly? Yeah. That was the Mecca. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin, yes. Rocky. Rocky, yes. Okay, that there you a... go. You know something. Pats and Geno's. That's over my head. Garbage. Those are garbage cheesesteaks. They're iconic. They're tourist traps. Rocky put them on the map. But there's way better steak sandwiches in Philadelphia than Pats and Geno's. Just sidebar. Um, no, so Philadelphia was like the epicenter. It was the largest city. It was the most diverse city. It was one of the most um, prosperous cities. In fact, there was a time that Philadelphia was the second largest English-speaking city in the world, right below London. 
right? So Philadelphia Yo, you know, was where it's at. Where did you read this? On the spine of a book when you were, went to some museum up there? Or is this all I your dare head? you guys to go to a museum with me. You'll be through the museum on your second cup of coffee, starving, ready to go to lunch, and, and you're I'm still, still only halfway through the exhibit. Do you read all the, like, the metal plaques oh, and, and shit? Yes, and oh, I have terrible God. reading comprehension Are you skills. Serious? So you read it like so four times? I have to read it four times, 100%. Yep. Good for you, Dustin. True story. But back on the episode, back on things we can learn from our forefathers. This is like good stuff. This yeah. is like an epiphany that I had. So we're pissed off in 1773 as a certain colony. Mm -hmm. No taxation without representation. We're being taxed. We don't like it. We revolt. We kind of throw a temper tantrum. King doesn't like it. He sends a bunch of troops. Troops start living inside of people's homes. What? It gets really ugly. So we're like, okay, guys and girls, we showed the king that we were pissed. It didn't really work. Now he's pushing back and he has more forces than we have. Let's get together and talk about how we can rectify the situation with the king. Cool. That's the first continental conference or convention. It's called a convention. That happened in Philadelphia. But you know what's really cool about it, John? There's 13 colonies. We all know that, right? 13 mm. colonies. Only 12 showed up. Mm. You know who didn't show up? The and I already gave you a clue. The people who didn't have representation because they was throwing their tea in the river. No, they, they, they were part of oh. all 13 colonies didn't have representation. Sorry. So there's one colony of the mm -hmm. 13. I've already mentioned this colony. Okay. They maybe chewed tobacco and picked cotton. Georgia. Georgia doesn't even show up. Georgia's like, ah, I can't be bothered. Okay. Can't, hey, you fools get together. You meet for weeks at a time, and if not months yeah, at a time. Just give me the homework after. And guess what? None of these dudes liked each other. Now, none of these dudes knew each other. Many of them didn't like each other. Okay. But they came together for a common cause and they negotiated and compromised. Think about that. Georgia didn't know New Hampshire. Virginia didn't get along with Massachusetts. But not even all 13 came together. But like doing a family reunion, you're one of 13. Mm -hmm. But your little sister decided not to come. Shout out. Shout out to your little <laughs> sister. You're like jealous. <laughs> yeah, and then they get together, and it's not like a family reunion. It's not all kumbaya. They don't know each other. Some of them don't like each other. They have different religions. Mm -hmm. They have different upbringings. They have different uh, ways of earning a living. And they sit there for weeks, if not months at a time. They negotiate and they compromise for the common goal. So how many times in our lives should we be negotiating and compromising, sometimes with strangers, sometimes with people who aren't like us, mm -hmm. in order to achieve that common goal? That may be for me as simple as putting a loan through, through the system. I don't need to like my processor. I don't need to want to hang out with my underwriter, but we need to come together for a common goal mm -hmm. and figure out ways to work with each other. How do we compromise, right? My boss may be telling me to do X and I want to do Y. Better yet, I'm a manager and I want my associates to do X. They and really want to do Y. Q, X, Y, Z, D. How, how can we sit down together and say, well, what is our common goal, right? Your common goal is to stay employed, make a certain living, have a certain quality of life. My goal as a manager is to make sure that we have good brand recognition, a great reputation in the marketplace, and that we have more net revenue at the end of every quarter than we did this, this time last year, right? That we're turning a profit. If that's what we know, how do we work together on that? And that started as early as 1774. But guess what, John? Mm. They compromised. Mm -hmm. They made a decision. And the decision didn't work out the way they thought it would. The Louisiana Compromise, I remember that. It's called the Louisiana Purchase. Damn and it. that was Damn. Yeah, that was gonna be about uh thirty or forty years after <laughs> this this first continental. Don't copy convention. off of my don't copy off of my test. Yeah, John is not the guy that you're gonna be uh cheating off of. No. So so it didn't, right? Because okay. all they were trying to do is make nice with, with the king. That's what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. It didn't work. So they came back together a year later. This time, Georgia showed up. Think about that. I made a decision and it didn't work out. Did everyone quit? Did everyone go their separate ways? No. Hey, we, we circled back. Now we know each other a little bit better. Now we are, we're understanding where people are coming from and their perspectives. We got our, our little brother, Georgia, to show up or our little sister, Georgia, to show up. Now let's reconvene. Let's figure it out. So now the year is 1775. You know what the solution was this time, John? We're declaring our independence. We're going to do this. 13 of us, 13 strangers came together with one common goal, one commonality, one common enemy. 
and that's that king over in England who wants to tax us without giving us representation. And it's been acting tyrannical. When we've been trying to do things peacefully, he has been coming back using force, and now we really don't like it. Well, at first, we were a little bit annoyed. Now it's like, nah, you done pissed us off. Mm-hmm. So 1775, it was 1776 that the Declaration of Independence was signed. Drafted and signed in that same city of Philadelphia. Right, same place that the first and second continental conferences or conventions were. Three years after the Boston Tea Party. Like what, how many life lessons are just sitting in this history? We go to school, we learn the history because we need to learn, well, who is John Hancock and who is John Adams and where did George Washington come into play and how about this guy, Benedict Arnold, who's a traitor? Like we learned all of this. Mm -hmm. But the lesson was in the story behind the story. The lesson was one in which how a group of people can come together from very different backgrounds. They don't have to be friends. They don't have to necessarily get along, but if they can show up, they can give it their their full effort, be willing to compromise and stick it out, great things will happen. So to keep you on the timeline, we go ahead and, and, and we draft the um, Declaration of Independence, which by the way, at the time, have you heard of John Hancock? Yeah, the guy who signed the thing. That guy who signed the thing. He's like also real big. Yeah, yeah. Because people couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your John Hancock right here. Mm-hmm. He was actually the person presiding over the Second Continental Convention. Okay. Pretty cool. He could have been president. Oh. Like he could have been president, but he wasn't. First president of the United States is wooden teeth George Washington. George Washington. You're correct. But what's gonna what's gonna shock you is understanding in this timeline where Washington became president. So nonetheless, 1776, Declaration of Independence, it's signed, 13 strangers. It's more than 13 people, by the way. I'm thinking of the colonies as if they're individuals, right? Mm-hmm. You know, trying Government. to make that. Yeah, they, they come together, a uh, bunch of dudes sign it. But you, do you know when they signed it, the story as it was told to me was silence in the room. It wasn't jubilation, they weren't cheering, they weren't kicking back a bunch of pints of beer. Well, Ben Franklin was, because he was a bit of a alky. Um, super smart dude. I mean, we owe so much. It's so funny. Ben Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, neither one of them were presidents. They were two phenomenal people in the history of the United States of America. But nonetheless, um, they signed it. The reason why I was solemn in the room, everyone assumed that they were signing their own death wish. Off their that death cu- warrant. Off that cush. <laughs> they, they literally like, hey, we know we have to do it. And we're not doing this for us. We're doing this for the future. That teaches a lot about sacrifice. What were people willing to give up for something they believed in? Now, this could be someone sitting at home right now, and they're worried about giving up their Netflix. They're worried about going down to a one-car household. They're worried about giving up their gym membership. They're worried about not going to the nail salon. They're worried about, but because for them, the sacrifice they're going to have to make in order to get out of debt is those things I just mentioned. And they're not willing to do it, but our forefathers were willing to give up their life for the pursuit of happiness. They're willing to give up their life for liberty, for freedom, to have a voice, to have autonomy. Like, think about that, right? Sacrifice. We learn about sacrifice. Sacrifice applies in all parts of our life. You want to get healthy, you have to sacrifice. Put that donut down. Don't order that soda. You don't need the fried mozzarella before your meal comes out. You don't need to purchase alcohol. Damn it. Especially at a restaurant where they charge you. Yo, the, so much money. Yeah, two drinks. I can get a whole bottle for that. I know, but it's still, it's the atmosphere and the ambiance you pay for. Okay, yeah, but also it breaks your belly and it breaks your bank account. Nah, I do five miles on the treadmill, you'd be all right. So, so anyhow, that's the thing about sacrifice. So nonetheless, 1776. You know what they've learned, though? Mm-hmm. Crap, we're our own country. It's 1776. We voted on... The Declaration of Independence, July 2nd. Okay. John Adams wrote his wife, Abigail, Mm -hmm. and said, July 2nd, the day that every American's going to remember. Or John, July 4th. Because we don't celebrate July 2nd. Yeah, that's when it went live. July 4th is when it went live. (laughs) July 4th is when it's actually everyone signed it. That was a soft launch, July 2nd. (laughs) It was a soft (laughs) launch. No one remembers the soft (laughs) launch. We should start celebrating that. Because here at TLOP, John and I made a conscious decision like three years ago that 
we are going to stay purple. We're going to stay agnostic. We don't go all out, even for things that we believe in, right? Like MLK Day is one of my favorite days. July 4th, one of my favorite days, like things that I could really rally behind. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, like these are fun <laughs> days. Mm -hmm. Halloween. I love to dress up. Did you see the alien? Did you see the UFOs that crashed in like Vegas? Not yet. Are you serious? And no, they found the aliens like in real life. People recorded it. I'm serious. I can't wait to see that. Are you going to celebrate that day? Yeah, because okay. Disclosure Day. I'm a Disclosure Day. day. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. And celebrate. then John's going to celebrate Disclosure Day. Yeah. Yep. But uh, John and I now, because we don't celebrate MLK Day and we don't celebrate uh, Veterans Day, mm -hmm. Memorial Day, we do a private life. We don't do it through the show. Mm -hmm. Maybe today. Mm hmm. We're going to come up with our two holidays. Okay. Soft open day. Soft launch. Soft launch. Soft launch. Soft launch. Day, July yeah, 2nd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soft and launch. discovery day. Yeah. Disclosure be, day. Disclosure so, day. Yes, yes. Those are going to be two TLOP holidays. Okay. But back on the history lesson that correlates to life. Mm hmm So we declare independence. But you know what we don't have? Money. Any laws. Yeah. Any rules. Mom left us the house. Okay, you got the house. Now what do we do? Yeah, like what are we? No one know. knew. But how about this? How many times in life and in business... Do you literally have to learn as you grow? Every day. You got to learn as you grow. Like the best day to start is today. The enemy of done. The enemy of perfect is done. No, the enemy of perfection <laughs> is Damn. done. Oh. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no. The enemy of done is perfection, John. That's what I said. No. Is it? Rewind the tape. Rewind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw the yeah. red flag. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The enemy of done is, is perfection. Yeah, that's what Yeah. We learned that from our forefathers going back to 7076. 1776, the, the Declaration of Independence, written, signed, good to go, mm. FU England, we are our own country, we are 13 United Colonies, now we're 13 United States. Mm -hmm. But what does that really mean? We have no idea. It wasn't until 1777, the next year, that we had the Articles of Confederation. Okay, what does that mean? It's just a loose set of laws that we're all going to follow. It means that Massachusetts, you do your thing. Rhode Island, you do your thing. Maryland, you do your thing. Virginia, you do your thing. Mm -hmm. South Carolina, you do your thing. But in the time of need, we're going to band together and, and do what we need to do. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Right? Me paraphrasing. Well, we went to war that same year. Okay. That war lasted all the way until 1783. 1783 is when we finally won the war with France's help. We would have never won the war without France intervening. Well and it wasn't just France, by the way. Mm -hmm. Spain played a role. Uh, Holland played a role. Battle of Gettysburg was epic. Battle of Gettysburg is a civil war, but it's okay, John. <sighs> Shit. I'm trying, bro. Okay. I'm throwing everything well, out. I'm going to get through this, and I hope people are following along. I hope they're enjoying the history lesson. It's cool. At the yeah. same time, you know, I hope that they're starting to really put perspective into, wow, how does this, how does this apply to my business? How does this apply to my, to my personal life? What are the real lessons we should have learned from our forefathers? Mm. But so the war takes whatever that time period is between 1776 and 1783, roughly eight and a half, nine years. Mm -hmm. And we finally win. Yay, we are in country. And now everyone's like, okay, what do we do? I don't know. Let's just kind of stick to these articles of confederation. They'll be our laws. Y'all go and do your own thing, right? Virginia run Virginia, North Carolina run North Carolina, et cetera. And that was all well and good until it was no longer well and good. So when it was no longer well and good, we got back together. Now, by the way, the war ended in 1783. We didn't get back together until like 1787. Mm -hmm. That was the Constitutional Convention. Okay. Right? So we had two continentals. Now we have a, um, and it was after this, at, at the second continental that the um, Declaration of Independence was, uh, was, was signed. It was mm -hmm. after that, right? Because that's kind of the timeline. 1774 was the first. That decision didn't work out. They got back together in 1775. Um, it was during that time this little battle happened. It's called Lexington and Concord. It's in your home state of Massachusetts. Shout out, Massachusetts. And then by 1776, there was the Declaration of Independence, and it was signed, sealed, delivered. By 1777, we finally have some kind of laws put into place. We're at war. The war ends in 1783. And those Articles of Confederation, they stayed in place. But from 1783, war ended, Revolutionary War we're talking about, mm. to 1789, okay. six years, 
There was no president of the United States. Shout out to mom and dad being gone for the weekend. Yeah, there was no president. Get lit. And the country was fine. I think we should go back. Or was the country not fine? I don't know. Wait, the country was fine enough in 1783 when the war ended. But by about 1787, they're like, hey, y'all, this really ain't working. Like, we're not really getting along. And we need to come together. Mm -hmm. You know what's really cool about not getting along? So we won that war, the Revolutionary War. Goes down in history. We win it, obviously, with the help of the French and then some other countries. Mm -hmm. Did you know, like, our own soldiers were fighting each other? They didn't know each other. They didn't like each other. Mm -hmm. Some of the leadership of the generals Mm -hmm. wasn't even leading them into battle. Is leading them into becoming teams and liking each other and getting along. Sounds like shopping at Walmart. Like... (laughs) That, it, good one. It sounds it's like shopping at Walmart with five kids. Because you got uh, on Black cause, Friday. Because you got on Black Friday. Yeah. You got to manage your kids, right? Then you got to manage all the people. Uh, yeah. Then you got to get out of there safely, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah, like that's just crazy to think. Like, what type of leadership did that take? It wasn't like all these soldiers who weren't soldiers; they were farmers and merchants came together. Farmers, merchants, and slaves mm-hmm. came together. And we're like, kumbaya, hell yeah, let's go take down England. They're like, hey, MFR, I know we're on the same side, but I hate you. Mm. And they were fighting each Each other. other. So, yeah, so you had to keep your people from fighting each other. Then you had to go out. My point being, it wasn't easy. It wasn't all roses. It wasn't like, oh, ah, you were successful because it was a good market. No, they were successful because they were committed. They were successful because they showed up every single day and put on the uniform and got to work. They are successful because they didn't give up. That's why they are successful. These are things that we can learn from our forefathers. So again, war ends in 83. We go without a president all the way until 89. We are running off of the Articles of Confederation all the way up until roughly 88, 89. But it was in 1787 that they said, hey, this great country that we basically started discussing back in 1774, 13 years ago, is great, but it's not great enough. It's perfect, but it needs to be more perfect Mm -hmm. in order to form a more perfect union. Hey, let's get back together. Let's do it again in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, and let's talk about it. But they couldn't let the people know. They did not let the people know. People knew they were meeting, Mm. but they didn't know what they were talking about. They thought they were talking about how to amend or ratify certain aspects of the Mm -hmm. Articles of Confederation. What they ended up doing is writing the U.S. Constitution. This holy grail that people on the left and people on the right love to throw in each other's face. Mm -hmm. Well, the Constitution allows me to do this. Mm -hmm. And well, whatever the Constitution says, and that's not what our forefathers meant. What's really cool is that document, which, by the way, is a living document. It was written to be a living document. That's why we have amendments to our constitution, but it didn't come until well after 14 years, 14 years from when we declared our independence, are we finally getting together and we write the U S constitution? We, the people of the United States, it gets certified in 88 and we have our first official president in 1789, 15 years after Mm -hmm. We declared our independence from England. It took 15 years to get there. Sounds like the big dig in Boston. And then, I've I've actually seen the big dig. I know, it took a long time. (laughs) And it's still just a big pile of dirt. Piece of shit. But anyhow. But then it's like, okay, you heard of the Bill of Rights? Mm. I guess. The First Amendment. I got the right to do this. The Second Amendment, right? Amendments. That's the Bill of Rights. The first 10 amendments. Yeah are known as the Bill of Rights. Okay. Okay. The right to fair speech, the right to bear arms, Mm -hmm. right? First, second amendments. Cool. That doesn't even get added slash ratified Mm -hmm. until 1791. Literally three years after the Constitution Convention met, two years after it was certified in, I mean, sorry, three years before, uh, after it was certified and two years after it went into effect, that's when the Bill of Rights came into play. Oh, okay. Again, look at that and from the lens of being a business owner. You wrote this amazing document. Mm-hmm. But even but two years later, you're like, ah, I got to make it more amazing. Mm-hmm. Ah, we left some stuff out. Ah, I can't believe we didn't think about that. 
So many times in business, we get what's called paralysis by analysis. You sit and you stare and you're like, oh, I got I to gotta make sure this happens. I got to make sure that happens. No, you don't. You have to put something together that makes sense based on your research, go out and execute, and then circle back three months or three years later and continuously work on it. Make sure your life and your business is a living, breathing document organism. Oh, yeah. Or document. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yes. There is no cut and dry. There is no right and wrong. It's a Google right? Doc. It's more perfect is what we're chasing. Mm -hmm. Every day we are chasing more perfect. And then just a couple other fun facts that I'd like to share, and then we can move on from this episode because there's some really cool shit that happens just a couple years later after the Bill of Rights, right? So um, the Constitution is, is, uh, goes into effect in 89. That's also the same year that George Washington becomes president. George Washington was the president for eight years, two terms. Okay. And then you know what he did? First time ever in documented history. He, he told a lie. Nope. That's honest Abe. Nope. Honest Abe. Uh, George Washington has a little fairy tale about him not telling a lie or an apple tree or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's too. Edward Newton. I have no idea. Physics. Okay. So, <laughs> so no, what Washington did that's amazing and what really makes our country amazing and one of the first, he advocated, okay, he left on his own will on good terms and handed over power to another human being. Prior, the only way that power was handed over was, was from it? father to son. Okay. Usually because dad died, he was king mm. and or queen or takeover. Mm -hmm. Napoleon. Hey, let's go to war. Let's conquer them. Nope. George Washington is like, I'm in good health. I'm getting old. I want to go enjoy the rest of my life on my plantation. And... I'm going to allow the, US, the, the, the the people of the United States, not really the people, just the men who own land. Mm -hmm. We have some more amendments that we have to get through. Um, try and stay purple here, John. Right. And uh, that was really cool. Like, that was like first time ever. Think about that. Never, never since 1801, mm -hmm. just 200 and, help me do some math, 22 years ago. Mm-hmm. Did somebody say, yeah, I'm tired of being in power. I'm going to hand that power over to you. Okay, we do it all the time in business. Hey, one CEO goes to resign. They name their successor. The successor comes in and they mm -hmm. hand over the, the power. You may be a dentist. You want to do that with your practice. Mm -hmm. Financial advisor with their practice. Loan officer with their loan partner. Right? We all can transfer power peacefully and still be involved. Washington was the first to do it, but it was in, it was in actual, and if, if I said 1801, that's actually incorrect. It was, eight, it was 1797. Mm -hmm. 1797 is when Washington handed over to <clears throat> Adams. But you see, Washington and Adams were friends. Washington and Adams were, for the most part, on the same team. Yeah. It was when Adams handed over power to Jefferson, because Adams was only president from 97 to, to 1801. Okay. When Adams handed over power to Jefferson, they weren't friends. They were foes. Word. Right? That was Massachusetts versus the Virginia. Word versus everyone. No, just versus. Oh, okay. You, you may have grew up that way in Mass, but. <laughs> no, but like that was 1801. What a great day in history. And then finally, like put it all in perspective for those playing along at home. It wasn't until 1865 that the 13th Amendment. So. We had the first 10. They called them the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what 11s and 12 are. I should, but I don't. 13 ended slavery. Mm -hmm. But guess what, John? What's that? They got that wrong, too. They missed a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. The abolitionists, the people who voted to end and abolish slavery in 1865, utilizing the 13th Amendment, mm -hmm. there was loopholes everywhere. And you know those people, they're going to find loopholes. So then they had to go and create the 14th Amendment. That happened in 1868, so a solid three years later. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until 1870 that the 15th Amendment and 13, 14, and 15 get tied together because you first start with abolishing slavery. You then have to actually recognize what is and what isn't citizenship. So the 14th Amendment is what basically states if you're born in the U.S., you're a U.S. citizen, period, end of story. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is we're one of a few countries that still operate that way. 
Like, there's many countries that if I'm born in that country, I'm not a citizen. Word. We're here in the United States of America currently. If you're born here, you are here. 14th Amendment gives you that, uh, that, that right. That right was instilled in 1868. It came after because it wasn't covered in the 13th Amendment. People didn't think it through. People didn't know any better. They realized three years later, oh, crap, we should have included that in the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. Just showing you so many times in life, whatever marketing idea that you rolled out was a good enough marketing plan, but there's probably a more perfect one out there. It's just going to take time for you to put your plan in play, see, see the results, study the results, and then go make adjustments as needed. 1870, that's where they had addressed the rights to vote, right? Because, oh... I abolished slavery. So that means I'm recognizing you as being a human. And then I was like, but crap, I don't recognize you as being a citizen if you were born here. So 14th Amendment, let's recognize you being a citizen. And 15th is like, oh shit. And the 13th Amendment, I didn't give you the right to vote. Maybe I should have done that. Let's give you the right to vote. Right? And then the 19th Amendment, you should know this one. We made Hawaii a state. Have you heard of suffrage? I don't, Justin, I'm not kidding you. When I say I don't like history and don't pay attention and couldn't give a shit, of, I don't. This far back. I wouldn't expect you to know what the 19th Amendment is. Uh, is it made up? I, is it I, a joke? Was I, it like it a... was not a joke. No, no, no. No, it ended women's suffrage. It allowed women to vote. Is there a 20th Amendment? The, yeah. For real? Yes. What Look is it? Up. I don't know. I'm How not, are you going to stop? How are you going to drop all this knowledge and then not know what the 20th <laughs> one is? You're going to go one, going to drop the it, Ten Commandments and die at the end. I don't know what 20 is. I just gave you 19. Because this episode is already growing long, John. What I wanted to do is share my excitement in my love of history Clearly. with the audience it correlated with a vacation that i just took my family on I know. and while i was on that vacation i was relearning mm. american history yep you had this epiphany i had this epiphany this that isn't an article so many things that we can learn from our forefathers that isn't in the history books yeah. because it's the lessons within the lessons it's the wrinkles under the yeah that this isn't an article you're gonna write this sounds like a book no i'm gonna write an article I'm going to hopefully get it published in so Housing a 15 Wire. 15 page spread. And then, depending on how the article goes and the thoughts and the ideas, I would love to make a presentation out of it. And then I can travel the country next year and I can make this one of my featured presentations. You know, you should... As long as I can do a better job of tying in mm -hmm. the history lesson with the business lesson, yeah. the history lesson with the personal finance lesson, the history lesson with the life lesson. If I were to summarize it, I'm like, y'all, figure out what you want to do, put together a plan. Work at it daily, never give up, and be willing to make changes and corrections when they are demanded. And it's not always going to be rosy. It's not always going to be clean. Not everyone's going to get along. And you're not always going to get your way. And not every decision you make is going to be the best decision or even the right decision. But if you can stick with it with a group of people who are sharing in your common ideals... It's amazing the magic that can happen, but you got to give it time. That would be how I'd summarize today's episode. Word. Anything else to add to that, my co-hostess with the yeah, mostest? I'm not getting that 50 minutes of my life back, so. You are not, John, but hopefully I made you 1% <laughs> smarter when it, when it no, comes to American did, history. No, what you did, you did show me that I really don't know my dates. <clears throat> and most people don't. I don't know if I would have known my date. This is though, you made this episode the, for like the handful of tea lovers out there. Like, oh my god, Dio, you, you pulled up my heartstrings. I love American history. You know, I mean, this for James. James with PNC Bank in Tampa is a history. Buff. Really? You may, thank, shout out James. Thank you. Shout out to James. Hey, shout out. What's his last name? So people can post a production and his address if they want to send him a thank you card. I don't have his last name off the top of my head. The so, fact that I remembered his first name, John, that's a win. That's a win. Hey, look. His name is John Coleman. My name is Dustin Owen. You just tuned in to an episode of the Lone Officer Podcast. We thank you. We ask if you like what we're doing and you want more people to share in this experience, let them know about us. Share us, like us, give us a five-star review, hop on YouTube, find our YouTube channel, mm -hmm. subscribe, follow us on Instagram, connect with me on LinkedIn. First name Dustin, last name o -N, Owen. No S. No S on that last name. And you would be shocked and amazed at how accessible I make myself to you on LinkedIn. And finally, there is a badass website that is only getting more perfect by the week. Perfecter. TheLoanOfficerPodcast.com. And if that's too hard, T-L-O-P, T-L-O-P, 
Online.com. Check out the website. Tell us what you think. And if you want to support the show, support the website, become a premium member. If you want the most value for your money, become a premium plus member. That's all we have to say about that. We look forward to catching you on the next episode. Peace. Thank you.